It's uh, my pleasure to uh, introduce to you um, and welcome Andy Broom, who's the um, Archdeacon of the East Riding. That's in the Diocese of York, for those that don't know where the East Riding is. Um, we in York have actually been developing our deaneries in a way that will enable us to be more effective in mission, along with other things. And, and um, Andy will talk us through that. Thank you. Thank you. He's hoping to have some pictures as well. There we, we go. Can, we can make coffee as well. Coffee as well, fantastic. <laughs> well, it's really good to be with you. I am one of the unprayed for archdeacons that... Uh, <laughs> It's tough. It's tough, I tell you. So uh, it's really good. To, I did notice that Bishop Allison, who's a very good colleague of mine and a dear friend, did compare Archdeacons, if you notice, with rubbish collectors and estate agents. <laughs> I confess there are days when Archdeacons feel like rubbish collectors, and I suspect there are days when other people look at uh, Archdeacons and wonder if they've got the same morals as estate agents. But anyway... <laughs> It's good to be with you, and it feels carrying on from Pete, uh, which was such a thoughtful and challenging uh, contribution. Thank you so much. Uh, this feels really different sort of style. This is the nuts and bolts of how a diocese has gone about changing deaneries. Um, but in a sense, hopefully, what you'll see is what we have done is we're trying to move deaneries to a place where they can do and deliver some of the vision that Pete's just given us. Um, that we can be engines for discipleship, for evangelism, and for social justice. So a brief history in time, as it were. Back in October 2013, the Darson Synod in York passed this resolution. It said that this synod asked the Darson Secretary to examine current and future support and encouragement of the work and mission of deaneries and deanery synods. That was as a result of a group of people who had made themselves a bit unpopular because they just kept going on and on about deaneries and the fact that the diocese didn't know what on earth to do with them. <laughs> the lady to my right was one of the awkward squad that just kept going on. And the diocesan synod, uh, the, the diocesan secretary, as you can see, didn't rush uh, because it took a year when a new archdeacon turned up and he noticed on my CV that I'd done something with deaneries in Derby where I'd been before. And he said, look, we've got a bit of a thing with deaneries. People keep sort of asking us to think about them again. Could, could you get some people together and think a bit about them? But the real issue is we've got no legal standing orders for our deaneries. Uh, and we must get that sorted. So the brief was to get some standing orders and to do something with deaneries. So we got together this group of, uh, of lobbyists. Uh, and we worked together, to be honest, for a couple of years, talking with our deaneries, talking with the Darson Synod, lots of conversation and last year a year ago the area and lay deans and we'll come to lay deans in a moment or two were commissioned together in York Minster and I think what I want to say at the beginning is if you go away from this conference and you are inspired even more about the role of the deanery through anything you've heard become that lobbyist where you are because we will only make change, as Peter's been saying, when we start working with people, communicating, lobbying, and arguing the case for things. If people like Ros hadn't argued the case for deanery in York Diocese, even to the point occasionally becoming a bit awkward and just keeping on going, then none of what I'm about to describe would ever have happened. So we sometimes have to be the lobbyists, don't we? We have to work the system to make things change. So I encourage you, if you feel you go away tomorrow thinking, I want to make more about deaneries where I am, work the system, be the lobbyists where you are. So really briefly, York Diocese, we're really big. If you go from the bottom in Hull up to middle, we're at the top, and there's traffic's good, and you don't break the speed limit, it will take you at least two hours to get there. Uh, so you need to add on at least half an hour because the traffic's never good in York Diocese to get there. So we're a big expanse. The big bit in the middle is called Northern Rydale, that deanery there. That's 43 miles from one end to the other. 
So if you want to get a sense of, of, of scale, that's 43 miles. In terms of the variety, in my patch in East Riding, I've got Hull as a deanery, which has got 350,000 people, 23 stipendary incumbents, and I've got two other deaneries, one called Hart Hill, one called North Holderness, that have got about 35,000 people and three stipendary incumbents. So enormous variety that we're working with, you also, no doubt, will have a lot of variety where you are as well. And that was part, always in our mind as we started thinking about how we work on deaneries. We can't change that. We decided not, it wasn't worth trying to change that. We couldn't make the deaneries the same sort of size. So we had to work with that variety. Our context, we weren't working from nothing. We had some good people and we had some good stories of things that deaneries were already doing. And we did our best to draw upon those, to illustrate to people, this is what is already happening. We can make it even better. But if I'm honest, generally the picture was like this. There was no, as you'd heard from Darson Synod, no wider vision for our deaneries, really at all by the wider diocese. If you ask people what does deanery mean, they saw it through the lens of either synod or chapter. That was basically what deanery is about. It's either about gathering as a synod or gathering as a chapter. Clericalism was, and to some extent still is, alive and well in York Diocese. And as we talk to people, a lot of the laity say, we get fed up when the clergy meet at chapter, they work out what should happen at synod, most of them don't bother to turn up, and that's still what happens. <laughs> I suspect we're not the only diocese where that might happen. The leadership, if I summed it up, and this is a bit of a generalization, but without doubt it was faithful. Our rural deans and our lay chairs were good, faithful, committed people. But to be honest, they were tired, they were really quite uninspired because there was little vision around, and because of that, if I'm honest, some of them were a little bit uninspiring as well. Overall, morale expectation was low, and we had no legal standing orders, Archdeacon, so get it sorted. So we began to meet together as a working group, we began to listen to deaneries, we began to talk with them, and these were some of the values and approaches that really influenced us. The first thing is, God is in our midst. And God was a work amongst us. There was a real sense that has been in York Diocese over the last few years that, that God seems to be doing a new thing amongst us. So we were encouraged to believe that deaneries could be part of that. Bishop Mark earlier was talking about the history of the deanery. You know, I believe if we scrapped deaneries completely, we would start again with something very similar. Because the local churches would say, how can I engage with other local churches nearby to make a difference? Now, our problem is that we often start from where we are, and what we've got has got loads of other values and added stuff added on. But we believe that deaneries really have a place, and actually, as I look to the future of the church, whatever that looks like, it's going to involve more collaboration, it's going to involve more working together, it's going to involve a better wise use of resources, and it seems to me the deanery is well-placed to provide that. You've seen how varied our diocese is. One of the things that was very important to us is to say context is vital and it's enormously varied. And we must never lose sight of the importance, whatever we offer, of that being the case. So we aim to provide a framework that would fit everywhere whilst recognizing that one size won't fit everywhere. So a light work framework is what we were looking for, that whether you're in Hart Hill with 35,000 people and three stipendary clergy, or in Hull with 350,000 people and 23 stipendary incumbents, it will all work. This became increasingly important. Let's trust people. Someone was talking about trust earlier, I think in the table I was with earlier, the importance of trust. You know, if the deaneries are worth anything, the people in them know their patch. The people in the deaneries know it better than the archdeacon does. So let's trust people. Again, within this framework, we were, let's have a sense of real permission giving. And we toyed around with this word subsidiarity. I think we heard it from the EC once. Uh, you know, wh where's the right place for decisions to be made? And we had some in interesting conversations because you can go wrong. We heard from one diocese where actually the problem was that the deaneries ended up they had a reorganization and they thought all the decisions should happen in the deanery. 
well, actually, there are other people in the diocese as well that should be involved in decision making. But actually, what are the decisions that are best taken in the deanery, with consultation with the deanery, and let's work with them. So that was what influenced us. And we ended up 